Thanks for checking out the video. This is part two where we go over how to install the relay on top of the Wemos board. If you didn't see part one, go ahead and go check that out. Part three, we're gonna be using a humidity sensor, so subscribe so you can see that video when it comes out. Relays come in all different shapes and sizes. A lot of them come in breakout boards, which make it very easy to hook things up to and control them. A relay is an electrically operated switch most relays use electromagnets to operate the switch. These are really popular because you can control a higher voltage with a lower voltage. In our case, we're gonna be controlling 120 volts AC with a five volt DC circuit. Relays were invented in the 1830s or 40s to be used with the telegraph. The Wemos Relay Shield has a normally opened and a normally closed terminal and it's operated using the D1 pin of the Wemos. We're gonna go ahead and just install the female headers with the longer legs so that we can install our humidity sensor on top of this, but also plug this into the Wemos board. In our case, normally open means that the fan is not going to be on until we energize the relay whereas normally closed would mean the fan is always on until we engage the relay, which would turn it off. Here I'm using my soldering iron to draw the solder through to the other side so that the pins are a little bit longer and they'll sit easier in the Wemos board. You can see right here that it, it just kind of sucks it right down through. Once the solder is heated up, you kind of just pull the soldering iron down and it draws it right through. Connecting the boards can be a little tricky. You gotta line up the pins and they don't always line up perfectly. Once they're seated in there pretty good, if you notice mine still sit a little bit high. Hook it up and you're ready to go. The first thing we wanna do is test to make sure that we have everything soldered correctly and installed correctly and the shield is properly seated. We're gonna navigate over to github.com slash Wemos page and we're gonna download the examples to a zip file. In a minute, we're gonna use this zip file to install the example codes for the Wemos board. In the first video, I went over how to install the Arduino IDE, install the board, and install the drivers for the serial to USB chip. If you haven't done all that already, stop now and go check that out. Once the example code is downloaded, we want to open up the Arduino IDE. Once it's opened up, we're going to go to Sketch, then Include Library, and we're going to Add a Zip File. Once we click that, we're going to navigate to where we downloaded the example code to. In my case, it's Downloads folder. We're going to click on the zip file and open. Down at the bottom in the debug window, you're going to see that it has been added successfully. Now we're going to open up one of those examples. We're going to open up the Relay Shield example. We're going to navigate File, Examples, Wemos D1 Mini Examples, Shields, Relay Shield, and we're going to use the Blink Without Delay example. We are just going to double check to make sure that we have the correct COM port, and we're going to go ahead and load this onto the Wemos board. You'll see down in the debug menu that it's compiling and now it's pushing it over to the board. And once it hits 100%, we're good to go. It's always good to run a test code that you know works before using your own code because I had the relay board installed backwards. Now that we know everything works, it's time to write the code so that we can control this over the Wi-Fi. What we want to do now is open up a new sketch and delete the pre-written code. We're going to copy and paste all that code in so we won't need what's there. The code will be in the description, on Instructables, and on GitHub. At the end of each section, I'll indicate when to pause and insert the code after I've talked about it. In this section, we're including the ESP library and some header information. It's okay to pause now. The next few lines are to declare our SSID, which is our Wi-Fi name and our Wi-Fi password. We'll come back to this later. These next few lines will tell the Wemos board 
your local network information, including the IP address that we want the WeMOS board to take. I'll show you where to find this information soon. In this next section, we're going to include the void setup function. It's where we initialize variables, pin modes, and start using libraries. Right here, we're gonna set up the relay pin, we're gonna set it as an output, and we're gonna set up our serial communication. The code in this next section is going to be connecting us to our Wi-Fi. It's gonna display a few dots, and then once it's connected, it's gonna give us the IP address to navigate to. We are now done with our setup function and are gonna move on to our void loop function. The void loop function will continue repeatedly until we disconnect power or reset the board. In the beginning of this function, we test to see what the current status of the relay is or what it should be. If this next section looks familiar to you, then you know HTML. This portion is where we build the web page with the two links. Now that the code is complete, we're going to jump back up to the IP address section. We're going to input the correct information for your local network. You can find this information very simply going down to network, right click, network and sharing, and then change adapter settings. Then you want to right click on the local area network. You may have more than one here. Click on the one that you're currently using. Go to properties. Then go down to IPv4. You want to copy over subnet mask and default gateway exactly as they are. You want to make sure that you select a different IP address than the one in the IPv4 settings. This IP address needs to be different than any other device on your network. I chose 99. Now we're going to edit the name and the password for our Wi-Fi settings. SSID is the name of your Wi-Fi and the password is whatever you've made it. When we go to compile this code, it's going to ask us to save it because we've never saved it before. It's useful to make it something interesting or something that you're going to remember. I got mine the Innovative Tom demo. After you click save, it's going to start the compile and upload process. And once we hit 100%, we're going to see over here in the serial terminal that it is connected successfully to my Wi-Fi network and given me an IP address to navigate to. Once we navigate to that IP address in our web browser, we can see that the two links pop up. Now before we do anything with those two links or buttons as I want to call them, we need something to control. Since eventually I'm going to hook this up to a bathroom fan, I took this old fan I had lying around and I'm going to hook it up to the relay. I started by snipping the wire in half and then stripping both ends. I connected two of the ends back together. I guess in the end I could have just stripped one side of this wire, but since it was glued together it made sense to just snip it right in half. Always remember that this is just a test, nothing has to be perfect. With AC voltage, it doesn't matter which wire you choose, just as long as you're breaking the connection between one of them. On the terminal block, the center pin is the common pin, so whether you chose to use it normally opened or normally closed, you're going to connect at least one of them to the center pin. The leftmost pin is the normally open, so that when we turn on the WeMOS chip and the relay, it is not going to engage the fan. It's only going to engage when we tell it to and when we energize the coil. The code that we wrote was very simple and will only work if you're on your own Wi-Fi network. It works even from your smartphone if you type in the IP address, in my case it's 10.0.0.99, and when we click on, it turns the fan on. When we click off, it turns the fan off and back on. I had a lot of fun with that. Thanks for checking out the video, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you see how simple it is to get a little Wi-Fi chip and a relay up and running. You could hook this up to a light. You could rewrite the code to maybe have it momentarily come on when you push the link so that you can close a garage door. Anything you really think of that you want to control, you can control with this. And the simple web interface could be modified to be better looking. If you have any suggestions or anything you saw in the video that you think might be able to be done better, let me know in the comments below. If you like this video and you want to see how I add in a humidity sensor, hit subscribe. That video will be coming out next. Thanks and take care.